All right, welcome to week five of Cine 399, South Park and Society. We're almost halfway there, which is nice, right? Y'all got to be feeling good about that. Um, but I'm the real Dr. Dre, DJ Food Stamp, coming at you direct from the Goat's Beard homestead. Back on the tractor. This is like back to day one, deja vu. Um, so we just in here. I'm feeling pretty lazy and been procrastinating super hard on doing these videos. But here we are. Got my coffee. Okay. Got my tractor. Out of frame is the basketball hoop. I don't know. We'll try to get out and shoot elsewhere on the farm. Um, but it's rainy today and you know, just kind of feeling lazy. Y'all know, you all know what that is. So uh, anyways, we're going to talk about patriotism and immigration in South Park episodes today. Um, so we're going to uh, finish up the um, Imagination Trilogy, Imagination Land Trilogy. Um, you should have watched episodes one and two prior to this. And we're going to watch um, another season eight episode um, entitled Goo Backs. Um, and, you know, here's the deal, you know, South Park has gone after extreme patriotism, extreme nativism, uh, extreme jingoism in multiple, multiple episodes. One of my favorites um, out of like some of the newer seasons is uh, White People Renovating Houses, um, which is, is a pretty, pretty good, I mean, you know, it, you know, it didn't get great uh, reviews or ratings, but it's a pretty good attack on uh, what happened in Charlottesville um, and uh, brings back a little bit of the trigger derbs and you know blaming Alexa and um, other technologies for trigger derbs um, but we'll get into a little bit of trigger derbs today and um, you know talk a little bit about um, you know fear and the inability to think Creative, creatively and using our imaginations, right? And so we'll talk a little bit about critical thought as well. So I think, you know, here's a point in the class where when we're in the same room, the same sphere, the same, you know, space, I like to ask you how you define patriotism. I think the thing about when I ask stuff like this in general is, you know, terms like patriotism are highly subjective, right? One person's patriot is another person's terrorist or, or whatever, right? Um, so I think, you know, it means something different to each and every, each and every one of us, you know, for some, for some of us, you know, it's like, yeah, willing to, you know, join the armed forces to protect, uh, you know, America or whatever your country, you know, something, something like that, or, you know, waving a flag or maybe patriotism, you know, to you is speaking out about, you know, social injustice and inequity in society. And, you know, it just sort of depends, you know, on who you are and what you, you sort of, how you define it, what it means to you to be patriotic. And, you know, for probably a lot of us, it's not something that we've, we've thought about um, or given a lot of consideration to or, you know, like care about, you know, like it's really hard to, you know, to sometimes put it, put it into words, like what we feel uh, is, is patriotic, you know, and, and um, we're told all sorts of things. Paying taxes is patriotic. Voting for a douche and a turd, between a douche and a turd is patriotic. But um, I guess it's just a way, you know, if we can just broadly think about it, it's about identification or belonging, um, you know, to a nation and having some form of pride in that element of being, you know, a part of that, that place. Um, you feel that there are certain behaviors that make you a part of the place that you have pride in or makes you not a part of, uh, of the place um, 
you know, where, where, where you have your national identity. Um, but I think it's just an element of, you know, just, just really being proud of, <clears throat> of where you're from. And I think, you know, for a lot of people, a lot of younger people, specifically in college, you know, and specifically at the University of Oregon, you know, a lot of younger people sometimes tend to be not as proud to be American in the sort of, um, you know, the sense of what you see on TV and, and how you think the world views you. Um, you may not have a sense of pride in some ways, like maybe previous generations had, you know. Um, for me personally, it's really hard to have a sense of pride or feeling in included when we have a government that does what it does and how it does and a leader who's a total asshat um, makes it real real hard for me to feel really proud of, of what the country does you know um, but it varies for everybody you know and that's just my personal opinion but that's kind of you know a way to think about patriotism is just, a, you know, national pride, basic, basic sense of it, you know, and you feel it in different moments. A lot of times in, in tragedy, you feel it more national tragedy, you feel more connected, um, more part, um, you know, of a country than, than in normal times, you know, or not, you know. Uh, I think it's important, though, to... Um, separate patriotism from jingoism and jingoism you know is basically a superiority um, and this is you know you kind of get the sense this is a pretty american thing where there's a where you you're you're you have extremely chauvinistic you know pride in your country to the extent that you view all others as in, inferior um, so it's an extremist nationalism, and this is what you'll see often kind of put on blast on South Park. If you've seen um, the movie Team America, it really goes into um, patriotism and jingoism, especially in a post-9-11 climate. Um, so it's a good, it's a good, it's a good watch. Um, but usually jingoism, it, it, there's always going to be a part of that is going to be very aggressive foreign policy trade agreements, um, you know, em embargoes, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, forcing other countries' hands at certain things, uh, instituting your own government officials in other countries that will do your bidding, you know, as a superior country, quote-unquote superior country. You know, and if you think about, like, in general, you know, what would Karl Marx say? This is something you probably never want to hear again in your life. But what would Karl Marx say about patriotism? He would say probably it's just another way of dividing people. Like national borders, nationalism, you know, whatever you want to think about it, um, is just a way of dividing people, and specifically the exploited working class. You know, whereas the working class in all countries maybe have the same interests, you know, the same goals and needs and are exploited in, in similar, similar ways. What divides them <clears throat> from solidarity is national lines, imaginary lines between lands, you know, created by men, you know, to dictate difference, okay? Um, and then we have another ugly word, which is nativism in, you know, or term, you know, and you want to know these for the test and how they manifest in, in South Park. Um, but nativism is something we'll see a lot of in, in the episode Goobax. We'll see a little bit of it in the ma in a man imagination land. Um, but it's basically any sort of ideology, political policies, um, et cetera, um, that are so, so patriotic, so much national pride that, you know, a country it will be, become anti-immigrant, will become so protectivist of its, of its borders, will become xenophobic in nature, like nationalism becomes xenophobic where you're afraid of 
others, Native people from other national identities, other, other countries. Um, and often the people who hold these views that, you know, of superiority, um, you know, of, of closing off borders, of, you know, um, <clears throat> of your country first, um, in a very specific way, um, you know, uh, these people hold that these views are actually patriotic to be this way, um, to protect one's country primarily from um, people emigrating to it uh, is viewed as a form of patriotism. So if you've ever seen anything like Border Wars or any of these shows where you have all these self-proclaimed patriots in the desert in Arizona or Texas or whatever, taking it upon themselves to protect the, you know, the, the country. <laughs> um, those would be nationalists, you know, I mean, uh, building a wall between the United States and Mexico is, you know, nativism uh, manifested physically, okay? Now, how does patriotism develop? Obviously, um, you know, there's a couple theories on this. The first is primordialism. The primordialist theory is that as humans evolve and evolve together and in a community, they start to gather into groups, you know, so, um, and start to share an identity within, within that group. So we, we, we have a tendency as human beings to sort of gather and collect ourselves into um, into groups, you know, and it's just a natural ev evolution and it happens on micro and, and macro levels. Now, that's just the tendency we have as human, human beings to, to connect and feel pride in groups. Um, the second way that uh, patriotism develops and the theory behind it is modernist, that basically the modernist perspective is that you know, patriotism is socially constructed through various um, forms, such as the media, po politicians who speak on things, your, your family, um, you know, uh, language about what it means to be this or that, you know, be American, etc. Um, often, you know, what you read, what you see, who tells you things, etc., is going to help form your sort of sense of what it means to be patriotic.